Hey everyone, welcome to part 79 of my Pokemon game series in Unity. So in the next few videos, we'll look at how to implement a shop system in which you can buy and sell items. So if I go speak to this NPC, I'll have three options to buy, sell and quit. So we'll do the basic setup for this in this video and we'll also implement selling. So if I select sell and choose an item from the inventory to sell, then first we'll get a dialog like this that shows how much money we can get for this item and then if we select yes we'll go ahead and sell that item all right so we'll look at how to implement this in this video you can support the making of this series by becoming a patreon and get some cool rewards for it like access to the complete project files of the series exclusive tutorials that are not covered on youtube and access to the Discord community. So before we start, I want to say a huge thanks to all the Patreons who are currently supporting the channel. You guys make the series possible and I'm grateful to each and every one of you. So let's start the video. So first, I want to do something that I missed while implementing healing. So when we are healing a Pokemon by calling the heal function, we are restoring the HP back to the max HP but we are not curing the status condition of the Pokemon, right? So let's also cure the status of the Pokemon by calling the cure status function. All right. So this was something that I missed during the implementation. Okay. So next, we have added the ability to show choices into the show dialog function, but we should also add it to the show dialog text function all right so the show dialog text function takes a single line of dialog text instead of taking a list of dialog lines all right so we should also add the ability to show choices to this function so for that we should add these parameters to the show dialog text function also so let me copy and paste them over here all right and then we should also write the code to show the choices so let me also copy the code for that all right so i'll copy it from the show dialog and paste it over here so now we should be able to show the choices from this function also so let me go ahead and test it by calling the show dialog text function from the healer script so in this function instead of passing the dialog object we should pass the dialog as the text right so i'll just pass a string over here okay so here we have errors because this function has more optional parameters like wait for input and auto close so what we can do is we can pass these as a named parameter. So here I can say choices colon and then pass the value for the choices parameter. And similarly for the action, I'll say on choice selected colon and pass the action. All right. So this way we don't have to pass all the optional parameters. We can just pass the ones that we need all right so let's go ahead and test if this is working so let me go talk to the healer npc all right so it's working fine so now let's implement npcs from which you can buy and sell items so in the scripts inside the character folder I'll create a new script called merchant so we can attach the script to an NPC just like we did with the healer script all right so let me open it up in Visual Studio and get rid of the default code so in this script I'll create a public function called trade 
and this function will be coroutine. All right. And then from the NPC controller script, first we need to get a reference to the merchant script, just like we do for all the other components. All right. So let me cache reference to the merchant script from the awake function. Okay. And then in the interact function here, if the merchant is not equal to null, then we can call merchant dot trade. All right, and I'll also add a yield return at the start since this is a coroutine. Okay, so now we should go ahead and implement the trade function. So for buying and selling items, we'll have to handle lots of logic. So we'll have to separate them into different states and handle them separately. So I don't want to put all the code in this class. Instead. I'll create a separate class for that. So let me actually create this class inside inventory. Actually, I'll just rename the inventory folder to items so that it can also have scripts related to shops that can buy and sell items. So here I'll create a new script called shop controller. All right, so let me just get rid of the default code. So this is a script in which we'll put all the code to buy and sell items. So in this script, first I'll create a public function called start trading. And this function will also be coroutine. All right. And it will take the merchant as a parameter. All right. So in this function, first we'll show a dialog and give the player three choices to buy, sell, or quit. So I'll call dialog manager dot instance dot show dialog text function. All right. And for the dialog, I'll pass something like how may I serve you? Okay. And then I'll pass false for wait for input because we don't want to wait for input before showing choices. So next I'll pass the choices. So here there will be three choices. Buy, sell or quit. All right. And finally, I'll also pass the on choice selected action. So this will be a lambda in which the selected choice index will be the input. All right. So what I'll do is here, I'll create a variable called selected choice. And in this lambda, I'll set the selected choice. Okay. So this will show the choices to the player. So next, if the selected choice is equal to zero, then that means the user selected by. Else if selected choice is equal to one, that means the user selected cell. And finally, if it's two, then that means the user selected quit. Okay, so if the choice is quit, then we can just stop the coroutine by calling heal break. Okay, so we'll implement buying and selling pretty soon. But first, let's go ahead and test this. All right, so from the merchant script, we should call the start trading function. All right. So I'll actually make the shop controller script a singleton so that we can easily access it from 
other places like the merchant script. So let me make this a singleton. So first I'll create a public static instance of it. All right. And then I'll initialize the instance from the awake function. Okay. So now from the trade function of the merchant script, we can call shop controller dot instance dot start trading. And for the merchant, we can simply pass this object. All right. And let me also put a yield return at the start. Okay, so now we should be able to test this. So let me go to Unity. And first, let me go ahead and assign the shop controller script to our game controller object. Okay, let me just drag and drop it over here. And then we need to create an NPC with the merchant script. So I'll open up the house one scene. And let me just duplicate this healer NPC and I'll call this one merchant. All right. And for this NPC, I'll just remove the healer script and attach the merchant script. Okay. So let me place this NPC towards the right. So let me try. Minus 24.5. Okay, that should be good. So now let me go to the gameplay scene from the game and try talking to our merchant NPC. Okay. So he's saying this dialogue with these three choices. And if I select quit, it should close the dialogue. Okay, so that's working. So now we need to implement buying and selling items. So for buying items, we'll have to create a separate UI where we can list all the items that the merchant have. But for selling items, we can just show the inventory UI that we already have, right? So let me implement selling first, since that's going to be much easier. So for selling, we just have to enable the inventory UI and give the control to it so that the user can select an item to sell. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to have multiple states for the shop. So here I'll create an enum called shop state. All right. So the shop states will be menu, buying, selling, and busy all right so this will be the menu state and then if the user selected sell then we should go to the selling state right so since this is the menu state i'll actually put this in a separate function so that we can go to the menu whenever we want by calling that function so here I'll create another function called start menu state. Okay. And I'll put all the code in here. And at the start of the function, I'll set the state to menu. By the way, we haven't created the variable for the state yet. We have only created the enum. So let's also create a variable over here. All right. So I'll just call it state. Okay. And from here, I'll set the state to shop state dot menu. Okay. And from the start trading function, I'll just call the start menu state function. So next, if the user selects the sell option, then we should set the state to selling. All right, so let me set the state variable to shop state dot selling. 
and then we should also enable the inventory UI and give the control to it right so first let me actually get a reference to the inventory UI from here so let me create a serialized field variable for that all right and then if the cell is selected we should enable the inventory UI okay and then we should give the control to the inventory UI and let the player select an item to sell right so for that first I'll create an handle update function in the shop controller all right so we'll be calling this function from the update of game controller and inside this function if the state is equal to shop state dot selling then we should give the control to the inventory UI by calling inventory UI dot handle update all right so this function takes two actions the first one is the on back action and the second one is the on item used action so first let me create a function for the on back action so I'll just call this on back from selling okay so if the user selected to go back from selling then we should go back to the menu state right so from here I'll call the start menu state function all right let me also put it inside the start coroutine okay and then we should also disable the inventory UI right so let me go ahead and disable it all right so now we can pass this function as the on back action okay and then in the on item used action we should pass a function with the code to sell an item right so I'll be implementing that soon for now let me just pass an empty lambda so we have an error because this lambda takes the selected item as a parameter so let me put a parameter over here all right so now if we choose the sell option then it should open the inventory UI and the player should be able to select an item to sell from the inventory UI right so let's go ahead and test if that's working so before we test we'll have to assign the inventory UI to the shop controller okay so let me just drag the inventory UI here and now let's go ahead and test if it's working all right so if I select cell then it should open the inventory UI but I'm not able to select an item from the inventory UI so that's because we missed to do something so here we created the handle update function but we didn't call this from anywhere right so we should call this from the game controller so here first we need to create a state for the shop and then we need functions to set that state all right so we can use events for it just like we do for the dialogues so let me create two events in the shop controller all right so I'll create a public event and the first one will be called on start shopping and by the way we need to import the system namespace to use the action okay so next let me duplicate this and create on finish shopping event all right 
let me actually just name this as on start and on finish to keep it short all right so the on start should be invoked from the start trading function so let me go ahead and do that all right and then the on finished should be invoked when we select the quit option all right so now we can listen to those events from the game controller and set the state accordingly so here i'll say shop controller dot i dot on start and when the on start is invoked we should set the state to game state dot shop all right so next let's subscribe to the on finish event okay so when this happens we can set the state back to free roam all right and then in the update function if the state is shop then we should call the handle update function of the shop controller all right so i'll call shop controller dot i dot handle update okay so now in the shop state the handle update function should be called and we should be able to select an item from the inventory okay so let's go ahead and test if that's working all right so if i select sell it should open the inventory and now i can select an item from the inventory ui okay i can also press x to go back and it should go back to the menu state all right so that's working fine so next when we select an item from the inventory and press z we should actually try and sell that item instead of opening the party screen right so we should not try to use that item like before instead we should try to sell it if the inventory ui was opened from a shop all right so let's go ahead and implement that next so right now when we select an item from the inventory ui we are calling this item selected function and from this function we are opening the party screen so that the user can select pokemon on which the item should be used right but now if the inventory was opened from the shop state then we should not do this instead we should try to sell that item right so what i'll do is at the start of this function i'll check if the game state is shop all right so if the game state is shop then we don't have to execute any of the code below instead we should try to sell the selected item right so the code to sell the item will be passed in the on item use action so we just have to run that action we don't have to do anything else if the state is shop all right so let me go ahead and invoke the on item used action okay and to this action we have to pass the item that was used so we already have that stored in this variable so let me go ahead and pass that into this action okay and then we can just heal break to stop this function because we don't want to execute anything else right so this will just exit the function and by the way before we exit the function we should also set the state back to 
item selection the reason is because at the start of this function we are setting the state to busy right we are doing this because while this function is being run we don't want the user to be able to change the selection so that's why we are setting it to busy so before we exit this function we have to set the state back to item selection all right so if the state is shop then we won't execute any of this code we'll just run the on item used action so now in the on item used action we should put the code to sell the selected item right so here i'll create a new function called sell item and this function will take the item to sell in the parameter all right and then from this action we should call this function okay so i'll call it from here and let me actually put it inside the start coroutine since this is a coroutine okay so now we should write the code to sell the item so for buying and selling an item we need to know the price of that item right so we'll define a field for the price inside the item base all right so here i'll create a float variable for the price and then we need one more variable over here so we need a variable to specify if this item is sellable or not so for that i'll create a boolean variable called is sellable okay and let me also create properties to expose these two fields okay so now in our sell item function we can write the code to sell the item so at the start of this function i'll set the state to shop state dot busy just so that nothing will happen when this function is being run all right and then we need to check if the item is actually sellable so we can do that by using the is sellable field of the item all right and if the item is not sellable then we can show a dialog saying you can't sell this item all right so i'll say something like you can't sell that for the dialog and then i'll set the state back to the selling state so that the user can select another item to sell all right and then i'll just return from this function by calling gil break okay so otherwise if the item is sellable then first we need to find the selling price of the item so we can get the actual price of the item from item dot price but we should not sell the item for its actual price right the selling price should be lesser than the actual price of the item so here i'll make the selling price the half of the actual price so i'll just divide it by 2 and assign it to another variable called selling price all right and let me just do math if dot round over here because we don't usually see fractional values for price in pokemon games so let me just round it to the nearest value okay so next we should show the selling price to the player and ask the player whether they would like to sell so for that i'll put another dialog here with choices so let me just copy the code to show dialog with choices all right so here i'll show a dialog like i can give 
the selling price for that and would you like to sell okay and by the way don't forget to put the dollar sign at the start otherwise the value of this variable won't be appended to the string okay so I'll show the user the selling price and then the user should be able to select yes or no for the choice so let me change the choices to yes and no okay so now if the selected choice is equal to zero then that means the user selected yes and we should go ahead and sell the item right so to sell the item i'll remove the item from the inventory of the player so we haven't cached the reference to the inventory yet from the shop controller script so let me go ahead and cache the reference to the inventory so i'll do it from the start function all right so to get the reference to the inventory we have a static function called get inventory right so using that we can cache the reference to the inventory and now we can remove the selling item from the inventory okay and then we should actually add the selling price to the total money in the player's hand but right now we don't have a variable to track the player's money so i'll be doing that in the next video let me just add a to do comment over here okay and finally we can show a dialog saying that we sold the item for this price so let me just copy and paste the dialog to save time so I'm showing dialog that says turned over the item and received the selling price. All right. So that's all we need to do to sell an item. And if the choice is no, then we don't have to do anything else. If you want, you can actually show another dialog, but I'm not going to do anything if the choice is no. And at the end of the function, I'll set the state back to selling so that the user can select another item to sell. All right. So now when we select an item from the inventory, we should be able to sell it. So let's go to Unity and test it out. All right. So first we have to set the price and the sellable fields of the item. So let me just go inside the recovery items and I'll select all the items and I'll set the price to something like 100 and make it sellable. You should have different price for different items, but I'll just set everything to 100 for now. All right. So now let me go ahead and test this. All right. So I'll select sell. And now if I select an item to sell, we'll get a dialog like I can give $50 for that. Would you like to sell? So if I select no, then we won't sell that item. And otherwise, if I selected yes, then we should go ahead and sell that item, right? So we sold the item and you can see that we no longer have the max portion in here. So selling items is working fine. So next, we should track the money that the player have in a variable and when we sell an item, we should add the selling price to the total money of the player, right? And then we should also be able to sell multiple items. So for example, here I have five portions, so I should be able to sell all five of them in one go, right? So I'll be covering that in the next video. So I'll stop the video here. If you think the series is helpful, please make sure to leave a like on the video and consider subscribing to my channel. 
that will really help me out and you can also support the series on patreon if you can afford it all right so i'll see you in the next video